Hey Toby. This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. You ready for some combine content? Hey YouTube, Zeth here from ZK Master Tech. I got an awesome video for you guys to check out today. We're going to be rebuilding a gear case on an S670 combine, the vertical auger gear case. You know the one that always goes bad or sounds terrible when you engage the unload auger? Yeah, so not only am I going to show you how to rebuild this gear case, I'm going to show you how to make it better. I might even say bulletproof. I mean, whenever I do this to a gear case, it lasts a long time. So stick around you don't want to miss how I get that done and this video is brought to you by Bespoke Post so let's check out and see what they got to offer. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and every month they introduce their members to cool new products like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing and even more. The box lineup changes every month and each box has around $7 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. And what I like about it is that 90% of Bespoke Post products come from small businesses, and many of them are based right here in the U.S. You only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz that you take when signing up, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you like it, you want to keep it, you want to swap it out for a different box on an offer, or skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. You only pay for what you want, plus the box lineup changes every month. Box number one, we got the Forge box. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, look at that. A Damascus steel knife. Well, that's nice. Alright, box two, we got the stealth kit. We got a little, it's kind of like a little pillbox, a little money clip. It's a pretty cool pen, it's got a level in it, ruler, stylus, pen. Oh yeah, that's nice. Ooh, I like that. I like that, that's sharp too. Whew, that's really sharp. Yeah, yeah. Box number three, parked. This is the parked box. Let's use my awesome Damascus knife here. We got a compact camp chair. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for this? There you go. Holds a 290-pound Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I got from Bespoke Post was super awesome. Those knives were really sharp. That Damascus steel, wow, that is beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And I can't believe that chair held me up. Anyway, if you guys want to learn more, you can click the link in the description and then use the checkout code MASTERTECH20 or you can go to bespokepost.com slash MASTERTECH20 and you guys can get 20% off your first box. So I'd like to thank Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the action. Alright, so here we got our vertical auger gear case here in this S670. Um, it's going to be similar in a 660 or a 9770 all the way down to 50 to 60 series. They all look like this. Um, so we got the bolts out for the charge housing. We're going to drop this thing down. Um, we've got a fixture here that um, one of our older techs a long time ago um, made for uh, pulling verticals. Um, this little rig here has been around since Moby was a minnow. Um, it's been around the shop for a long time, but it works. So there's a pipe sticking out of this piece, slides into this uh, piece that bolts on to the end of the cherry picker. And then you got a rod hanging out, which is handy because you can slide a cheater bar on there and give you some leverage back out here to where you can control this gear case and auger. Um, I've already tried to pull the auger off the gear case. I'd like to leave the auger in the charge housing, but uh, she won't come off the gear case, so we're just gonna pull the whole thing down and then get it out on the table where we can work with this thing.
All right, so we got her off the cherry picker and we got her to sit on the bench here. And the reason why we're rebuilding this is because it's got a ton of backlash. So this is gonna be really noisy when you run it, but also the bearing that's on this shaft inside the gear case is loose. I mean, I can rock this whole gear case and it's moving that bearing. So the bearings on these actually waller out the housing. Um, I tried to get that auger off again and it would not budge. So um, we're not gonna panic just yet. So this will allow us to, you know, have it sit here. We're gonna get this cross shaft out of here and then we'll just take the nut and the gear off um, right here and we're just gonna try to pull the gear case off the shaft. Then we'll just be dealing with the shaft that's stuck in the auger and then maybe we can do uh, something with it then. So we're gonna take this little shield off here. Um, it's just a finger shield. Doesn't really do much. These sometimes will break off. Um, and fall down. Um, you don't really have to have it there. It doesn't need to be in there. Um, but it uses the same bolts as the bearings do. So we're going to pull that out. And there's just 315s on the back side that are covered in schmoo and paint. So it comes off. Now we get, need to get the bolt out on the end, 24. There she goes. And we took the bolt and the washer out, and we're going to take another bolt that we don't really care about. Um, we're going to thread it in the end. Put it in real good. 10-pound sledge. Now you can see that took a lot of force to get that done. That's why you don't mess around and get you a bigger hammer. You swing less. shaft. Now in S series combine these gears are going to be splined but on the older 60s and 70s you're just going to have a keyway on here and on here. But the 70 series are splined. Now we're going to take this 30 millimeter lock nut off here. And I'm just using Milwaukee uh, mid torque on that. No problem for that guy. Take your washer off. Slide your, your gear off. Oh my. Now we're going to try to see if we can just slide this housing off the shaft. may or may not want to cooperate with us. Alright, so with a lot more persuasion, jamming my pry bars in here, try to wedge it off. Been air hammering on the shaft, been putting the wedge in there, smacking the shaft with a 10 pound sledge. I finally started to get it to move. And let's see if I can air hammer it the rest of the way off here. Holy moly was that thing on there. 
All right. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. So now you can see why these don't want to come apart. See how rusty that is in there? I mean, it's just horrible. So maybe we'll get lucky. We'll soak, soak that down with some penetrant oil. And we'll try to get this shaft out. I don't really care about the shaft. I'm getting a new one, but I'm trying to save this auger. So let's see if we can't get that guy out. All right, let's see if we can uh, jiggle this guy out with an air hammer. Ta da! Look at that. All right. Well, I just saved this customer 1200 bucks because that's about how much this auger is. So, if you got one stuck on the shaft, you, you don't have to give up and just throw the whole works in the trash, right? We can, I, I showed you how you can get it out to where there's just the shaft there. Then you can work some penetrant in there and, you know, rattle that guy out with an air hammer and sometimes it works sometimes it don't um, if the splines were had if they were twisted in there or they got worn bad enough to where you know the splines were stripped and it just kind of welded itself together then yeah maybe we're gonna get rid of everything but uh, it can also that situation can also happen up here at the top where it won't come off the top of the gear case and then you got to try to pull the whole 90 degree gear case and um, vertical and the uh, lower gear case out and all one assembly and try to get that all apart so um, but now now that we got that off we can reuse this auger clean her up a little bit make sure the splines are okay at the top and uh, hopefully we can reuse this auger and because the flighting on it's still good I mean it's super thick um, so we're gonna get into reconditioning the gear case okay so we got our gear cases here so this is why the old ones fail so you'll see this bearing is just wallered out in the housing. I mean, the, it's taking metal out of the housing. And why is that? That's because these bearings, they just slip fit into the housing. And whenever you put a load or torque on these, it causes it to kind of move in just a little bit. And then also the outer race can start to spin and eventually it's just going to wear out your housing, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to get a lot more life out of these. Um, I got a couple tricks up my sleeve that kind of uh, bulletproofs the gear case. I don't know if it makes it absolutely bulletproof, but it does make them last a lot longer. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the difference is in an S series, you've got four of these bearings, right? You got two that go inside here and then you got two on the cross shaft. So on your earlier like 70 series combines, the two bearings that go inside, they're gonna have a seal missing on one side. And so you'd put that in that way and then the top one in this way. And then you would have a grease circ where this plug is now. So you can grease those bearings. Um, when they went to the S series, they decided to get away from greasable bearings in there. So they just used the same bearings that we always used on the cross shaft, but we just use four of them now. I'm not really sure exactly why they did that. If I had to assume, it was to get rid of um, another grease point on the machine that the customer didn't have to worry about. Now, in my opinion, I don't really think it makes that big of a difference in longevity, whether they're sealed or they're greasable, because we could put the greasable bearings in from a 70 series in here and put a grease circuit in here. Sure, yeah, we could. Um, but the main reason why they fail is because it wallers the housing out. And then when that gets wallered out, then that allows this gear to move and then that's gonna throw your backlash off. And then it's gonna make the gear case really noisy, vibrate excessively, and then it's gonna start breaking this plate, um, start getting some cracks in places we don't wanna have. 
Um, so you can put a SX80 vertical gear case in an SX70. Um, your course, you can you can reuse your sprocket. Um, the main differences are that all this down here is in a corn head grease bath. So your bevel gears um, are getting grease all the time, staying lubricated, and then you're going to have tapered roller bearings in the assembly instead of these um, sealed ball bearings here. So you can make that happen, make it work. It's really expensive. I guess it just depends on how many years you're wanting to keep this machine, right? And how much money you want to spend. But if you do rebuild your gear case the way I'm going to show you, you're going to easily be able to get three plus, four, five, six years out of it before you're going to need to rebuild it again. Um, maybe even longer than that. But if you just slap these bearings together in these housings like the factory does it, it's not going to last very long. So um, this video's purpose is to show you how to rebuild this particular gear case alone and how to get more hours out of it. So I'm not going to get into the particulars of upgrading to a bigger gear case from the 680. Um, we're going to focus on how do we make this one better, right? So we've got all our parts here. We've got four bearings. We've got new snap rings. Get a new spacer. So there's a spacer that goes inside here. Um, it's just a spacer on an S series, um, but if it's a 70 series, you're going to have a spring that goes on here that acts as an auger in there to spin to help distribute the grease inside of there. So pay attention to that. If you have a 70 series, you're going to have a spring on this spacer. Um, I get a new spacer and snap rings and everything because I don't want to take the time to dig everything out of this gear case. I want to leave it just like this. Pitch all that. It's not worth my time. I just get a new spacer, new snap rings, we got a new lock nut and washer, got two shims for the bottom, we got a shim pack for the cross shaft, and then we've got you new know, four bearings, and then we got a new set of bevel gears, and then we got a new shaft. So S series shafts are going to be splined here, um, the 70 series and older are going to be keyed right here. So. That's the main differences, but the housings are the same. The only difference is, is this one has a plug with sealed bearings. The 70 series got a greaser and greasable bearings on the vertical shaft inside. So let's get started um, with the top here. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do, um, Loctite 620 bearing mount. That's gonna be your best friend on this job, all right? So we're going to put a snap ring in, and then we're going to put a bearing in, and then another snap ring. And you got snap rings on the top, that's what's holding that bearing into place. So I'll put this <coughs> snap ring in here. I'll get my pliers switched here. Because we've got to squeeze it together. Alright, so I get it on the table, get both hands, squeeze it in, and you may have to hold your tongue just right. There, get her snapped in the hole. Alright, so we're going to put a little... Loctite 680 right on the outer rate where the outer race is going to go for the bearing. So we want to technically seize that outer race into that housing so it doesn't spin on us, right? Get this guy dropped in there and you know, just give her a couple taps. It'll plop into the hole. Now we're going to take our other snap ring. Put that snap ring on top. Snapped in. Now we got a new, new seal here. 
So we'll tap that guy in. Just kind of work it like that. Now, we're going to flip this around for now. Okay, we don't want to put our our shaft in just yet. Okay. So this bearing right now, it will slip fit into this hole. I can just tap it in. It won't take much effort to get it in there. And when it's in there, you could probably spin the race on it. So here's the first thing that I do is I take an air hammer with a punch bit and we're gonna ping this housing in four places. Okay, and that's gonna swell the metal out a little bit. So then our bearing goes in there hard and then we're going to also put Loctite um, bearing mount, uh, 620, 680, something like that. We're gonna put that in there and then that's gonna lo help lock that outer race to this housing so it can't move. that now you don't have to go crazy just put a good sized divot in it okay now we're going to stick our shaft in from the top that top there okay it's gonna look like that now don't forget your spacer stick our spacer in there now we're gonna cut coat this up with some bearing mount here Just like that. A little bit on the housing. Now we're going to drop this guy in. Like that. We're going to drive this bearing in. Now, we could technically slide this back right that bearings going in pretty hard slide that back and we can just tap this bearing in All right slide that guy back through kind of wipe off the the excess bearing mount. Shove our shaft back through. Now that went, that bearing went in a lot harder that time, so it will last a lot longer that way. So there's your trick right there. Now we're gonna transfer the plug over to here. And then you don't want to forget your shims. Now is the time where your shims go in. All right, so you're gonna get two shims. And put them in there. There's just one size that you can get for there. Put two on it. That's where you need to be. 
and then we'll swap this uh, plug before we put the bevel gear on there. Yeah. So this plug is a 3 16 Allen. Gear. There's two different size splines here. You got a big and a small. Small goes on this shaft here. Just like that. And you're gonna put the washer on. So I like to put a little red lock tight on the lock nut because those those will come loose on you even though they are a lock nut uh, sometimes you just have other components wear and you think this backed off but it didn't um, you go to tighten it but things are still loose inside the housing there but I don't want this thing to ever back off so I put a little red loctite on it and you just grab the shaft kind of put your hand around it Take an impact with 30, hammer this down. Click. Good and tight, right? So there we go, there's our bottom side. Now we just gotta rebuild our cross shaft and put that guy in, put our shims in, and lock everything down. Okay, so um, took the, the bearing cap for the, um, the cross shaft and just pounded the bearing out, out a new one in. Got the, uh, the cross shaft here. Um, I just stick them in a vise with the sprocket sitting on there. And then I heat this up with a torch because it's always going to fight you. They always come off hard. Heat it up with a torch real good. Get it good and hot. Smack this shaft real hard. It usually pops. Take your sprocket and your uh, keyway out here, and then drive your bearing off. Drive a new one on. So we got a new bearing on our cross shaft here. So now what we're going to do is stick this in here. You always want to make sure that you clean um, the surfaces where the bearings are going to go, so they'll slip on easy so you get the shaft started in the hole here spline your new bevel gear on like that get this started in the hole give her a little tippy tap in there real good. Now you don't have to worry about your your backlash or nothing just yet because once we put this in and these shims in here and bolt it down and then put this bolt in it's going to set that shaft where it needs to be. So you always want to get a new shim pack. Get new shims for the, the vertical, new shims for the cross shaft. And they'll come two in a pack here. Get your bolt started. Now I'm not putting that shield on just yet. And like I said, you don't you don't have to put that shield on. It's not critical. Run these down evenly. Stuff's gonna move around, don't worry about it.
right? Now, when you put this bolt in, it's going to put that shaft where it needs to be. I put just a little bit of red on it. You don't have to go crazy. that in there. Hammer this down. Okay. Now we check our backlash. Oh, it's perfect. Let me bring you in here. Check this out. Alright, well you guys remember how much slop was in there. I'm going to guess somewhere north of 250,000 some backlash. And that's pretty typical when you got a worn out housing um, whenever this gear can move that much. Now when you get these uh, back together with new shims and new gears, it's supposed to be 6 to 16 thousandths. So we've got a dial indicator set up here. Look at that. 11. And this barely moves. I mean just barely. So, we're right there at 11, so if you can clunk, clunk, clunk that back and forth, you can only imagine how many thousandths that is. So, we're sitting right there at 11. Now, whenever the gears are tight like this, whenever you run the vertical unload, it's going to sound butter smooth. Um, before, you'll have like a wah, 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 wah. Now it'll just be one solid tone and just be wah and sometimes you can even barely hear that this thing's running. So when you got her set up like this, she'll be nice and quiet for you. Now sometimes you can put this together just like I showed you and you won't have any backlash at all. It'll just be solid. Now don't panic at this point. You can just take a hammer and just kind of smack this gear right here on this face in a cup smack it here and then turn it once and smack it again and sometimes it'll kind of loosen things up just a little bit to where you'll finally get this little bit of backlash here or probably whenever you run the machine it would probably loosen up a little bit go where it needs to go but um, I have put these together and they be tight and instead of trying to change shims and everything you know I just kind of give this a tap just a little bit and then I'll have my backlash. So now we can put on our sprocket here. Put our put our keyway in. Just like that. Get our sprocket. Now I'll clean this up and and get it painted again once I get it back on here. Slip her on like that. Washer. Our lock nut. But just a teensy bit red Loctite on there. Don't have to go crazy. Right. Lock this down. Just like that. Beautiful. Now if you want to back over here. Now if you want to you can take these bolts out and put your shield back on. This shield wasn't broke or cracked so I guess we'll just go ahead and throw it back on. Okay. Now we'll get this um, put back on. I'm going to put the fixture back on. And we'll get it on top of the cherry picker. And then I'll install a new charge housing plate on it and get some silicone around it.
Um, I always get a new plate with a new housing. Um, especially that one was broke and cracked and it's been welded on and it's just not in good shape. So I always put a new plate on there. And I get new bolts too because I don't mess around I'm getting out all those lock uh, nuts off that gear case and they're covered in rust and paint and everything. So I just get new bolts. Makes it a lot easier to look and a lot faster. So I got a new charge housing plate on there. You put a little silicone around to fill the, the gaps. Um, that keeps um, water and stuff from draining out through there and just draining down the sumps like it's supposed to. And uh, got some Lock Seas 2020 that I put on the splines. Um, you can put grease on there. Um, if I had some around, I actually prefer to use a real heavy, thick axle bearing grease. That works really good on those, but uh, I've had good luck with the Lock Seas 2020 too. So, got that on there. Now I just need to grab the vertical over there, slot it onto here, and put this back up into the charge housing, but we're going to have to time this auger to the horizontal, so I'll need a hand with that. All right, well that's gonna do it for this video. I mainly wanted to show you guys how to rebuild that gear case. Um, if you wanna see the gear case um, and vertical auger installed in the combine, I'll put a card up here in the corner where you guys can see how to do that, and I'll put a link down in the description um, for a video for you guys to see how that's done. Um, I wanna thank Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video, and uh, keep that green iron moving, and I'm gonna see you guys on the next one.